Right, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time on, on this since uh, part one, and I'm just um, lightening and fiddling around with the with the the end of it. I want it fairly accurate because everybody that knows Cornwall know, would know the Padstow or the Camel Estuary, Padstow and Rock. So what I've done, I've put in, just indicated the jetty here where the ferry pulls in. And you can see, go out there, around here, around these channels, around here, or around one of these, it's a pad slow when the tide's out. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely thing to do. I'm, so I'm just really just titivating it now, just bring, bring some lights back in. And I'm just trying to reduce some of the, the, the hard edges around these cliffs. They're not entirely accurate, but that's what I can do at the time. So this, this is quite a, I need to do something with, with that. It's just a little bit distinct. I think that's just a bit high there, the, uh, the cliff. So I just want to just bring that down a little bit. Just using a little brush here. I've added some some other, a couple of other colours to my palette. <coughs> Just lose some of this here. Bring some of the sky colour into it, that's a hard edge there. That's Take that out a little bit, bit of, bit of green. Oh, I've added a pale yeah, a green. really lost and found. I don't like hard edges. <coughs> Just separate with, with tones, different tones, lights against darks, but not too obvious. I think I've gone up a... that's not high enough up there. The water, so I'm going to just take, just using this small brush, just put some of the watercolour, oh, the watercolour, the colour of the sea. Bit better, it's still a bit too, 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 too high. The whole thing is just a little bit too high, but, uh, but anyway, where, where I see like the light sand, I'm putting, I'm putting that in. I'm using a bit of burnt umber and burnt, no burnt umber and a tiny touch of um, yellow ochre my sand. Burnt umber is a very very good colour for sand. Sort of a greyish sort of colour. So let's just, just put that in there. Oh, the, the sky from the photograph that I'm working from is, is, a, is just a blue, just a plain blue. So I've um, added some sky some clouds and I really need just to show some some reflections of the uh, cloud in here just just put in some where, where those nice clouds are just Put them in, and it helps to break up the, the flatness of this colour here. So we've got some more further over. So we're just reflecting that that little bit of light across there. Just adds a little, little bit of interest in that in flat areas here. So well, you need lots of colours like this. <coughs> this is a huge sand dune with a golf course 
pull in. I'm just going to just just vary some of it. Add some lights and darks. And we need a little bit of sandy colour just breaking through. Whoops. That's not very good, is it? I need some more variety in the greens. Now I'm using this pale, pale green with some red, bit of blue. I'm trying to get away from the black. I think the black was killing the greens somewhat in this one. So I'll just go back with the greens a bit of dark. So you can start your, your greens by using a mixture of the blue and the red first to give them the dark side and then just a little bit of, bit of green to it or yellow. I put in a bit of just a bit of blue and red in there I think. Sorry, this is probably boring watching this bit, but look at high high spot on the trees there. I mean, you're making paintings. If something, it might be accurate according to a photograph, but you don't have to do it accurate. You just do your thing with it and turn it into, a, into an impression, into a piece of art. It's not just a, an excuse for doing bad work, but it does help. Right, these, they're, they're buildings, but I don't want them to, to show as portraits. So I'm just, I'm just trying to, to hint with some warm lights. So that's a bit of a touch of cadmium red, touch of, touch of yellow ochre. And then just, just put in a couple of buildings there, one on top of the other. White stucco. It's a very, very expensive part of the country here. They call it Kensington on Sea. And then we'll put in some roofs. Now I'm using for my roofs, I'm using Bit of um, bit of ultramarine, a bit of light red. And there's more white there. Oops. Tiles, um, roofs are mostly grey, slate. That's not very good, is it? I'll let that dry, I mean, I'll go somewhere else and I'll, I'll cover that up again. These little bits are, I want to suggest them, but I don't want them as, you know, as things stuck on the landscape. So we're we'll, a lot of boats in this area, lots of yachts, so we'll bung some in. Oops. I think I've got the gap between these two rocks just a little bit too, too spread apart. My son gave me the picture and asked me if I'd do it.
배포배포 질장하셔 주차해 보세요. 그냥 이번 리셜 헤드. Lots of masts here. do this. Uh, I'll put in a bit of light sandy colour there. Just to break up, just add a bit of interest in these rocky rocks and sand. Cliffs overhanging, well, like the the ground overhanging the uh, the cliffs. You get a bit of shadow. Don't do it as a solid line. Just here and there, just to darken, to give that shadow under the uh, underhang, overhang. Oh, that'll do. That's it. This is nice and indistinct. You can make it even more so. Add bits of bits of blue, bits of sky colour. Just lessens the, it gives you some aerial perspective to it by adding these cooler colours. Same on here, good distance. So that's okay. Just going to put, try put in some windows, just a bit of burnt umber. Well, they're better than they were. Um, so we'll just put in a bit of a. I can't remember if there's a wall here. Put in some light blue along here to show shallowness as well as the cloud reflection. Let's put in a few bits of um, flotsam, although it's very, very clean, this estuary. But we can put just a little bit of... A bit of seaweed or something. Around here, to going towards Waybridge, you get some lovely, shouldn't say this really, but sand fire, sand fire. Really, really lovely. Uh, 
I'm going to put in some light, some almost white, but just a touch of blue, just to show the light reflecting on the wet sand as best I can. No, I don't think I can do much more than that. that let's just make that a little bit less distinct. Put some some pure white now, just a little little touches. Because essentially this is a sea picture and not of buildings. Right, I think the water has been just, just a shade, just a touch of blue in the white. So this sea going into there, sea into there, a little bit coming up here. I, th I think that's about the best I can really do with that. I'll sign it. I can't put it in a mount because I haven't got uh, a mount that size. But Put a few seabirds in, can't we? Why not? Okay, well, that's that's it, I'm afraid. Um, for better or for worse, so it doesn't look much without. I don't think I've got a mount. I'll just have it up. Bear with me a second, just in case I have got something of a, an appropriate shape in my collection of mounts. No, I did have one. But, uh, no, well, you'll have to take my word for it. I'm reasonably pleased. It's quite a difficult thing to do, show these. I've tried several times in the past to make something of these these mud flats or sand flats, sand bars. They're not mud, it's, it's sand. And I've tried to show the depth of the the sea. But just those little bits of boat. It's, uh, well, I'm going to let that go. That's That's it. I'm afraid. Uh, thanks for watching. Part two, Padstow Estuary, or oh, the Camel Estuary, North Cornwall. With this leading up to Wade Bridge. Uh, those that know it, love it. It is an absolute ideal, ideal, ideal place. We've visited there many, many times and we've got many photographs of this area. And I've, I've demonstrated quite a few of them in the past. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.